All right, it's recording. You guys are all set. All right, thank you. Um, so I think first things right, call to order. So, or call to order in attendance, Steve. Here. Cleone. Present. How you both doing? All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I have good and bad news uh, for the survey. One, Survey Monkey is out because it limits to 100 responses total. The good news is the town has a free survey tool that we can use on the town's website. Okay. So that's yay. The problem, the only concern I have with that one is it's only yes, no questions or uh, five multiple choice questions. So there can't be any open response questions like fill in your name and your street address or please provide recommendations to the committee. Um, so I don't know what you two think about that. Um, my opinion on that is like, it's a free survey tool that we know is going to work and aggregate the information. Um, the downfall is that we don't have something uber specific to tie something back to. So like questions one and two could be, are you a Bridgewater resident? Um, what precinct are you in? But that's about as detailed as I could think of, unless you two think of something, can think of something else. I just want to make sure I understand. So two choices, the polling, which I saw that that wouldn't work. And then the other one, you'd, we're limited to multiple choice questions that can be aggregated, but we don't have an opportunity to have open ended questions. Correct. That's a problem. The other, it is if there's two solutions to it. One, we could do a hard thing where somebody would then have to manually tally all of the, we could create a form like that people can download as a PDF, but then it won't be aggregated at all. So we would have to manually aggregate the answers, which I don't mean, I don't think we're going to get that many anyway. Like I think 500 is exceedingly ambitious. Um, but then people would have to email them back, uh, mail them hard copy, mail them back in once they typed it exactly like that's. Yeah. So do we know why we can't have, is it that we, the open-ended question can't be aggregated because my under, or that's a function that doesn't exist? It's a function that our town website does not have. Like it exists somewhere, but we don't have access to it as the town of Bridgewater's website. Mm. So I'm putting on my so hat, right? We, <laughs> go the, ahead, Steve. The email that we received, it said specifically, it was called like a polling. It wasn't necessarily a survey tool. It was more of a polling tool. So did you both CC on the option, right? Like the sample one, right? Yeah. So I called after that and I was like, uh, I need you to walk me through this because I'm stupid. <laughs> and it like, so we can create the questions however we want and then it will do the yes, no, whatever options we want after, but the like a comment fill box is not doable on that same platform. And do we know if there is a lack of funding to do, do survey Medicaid? And I, I apologize if this is outside of the scope of the work we're doing. So like I've always disclosed, I'm always going to be thinking and bringing to the table how to make local government accessible to residents, right? And so the fact that they cannot provide open-ended feedback to the most important document, that is definitely problematic to me. And I'm wondering how much do we um, push a little bit because a SurveyMonkey membership is not that expensive. It is something that is very, um, even if they just do it for the month, right? We will get the full functionality and allow us to make sure that our process is better informed by the resident or do we and I don't want to be judgmental, but I don't, I don't have another word. How do we water down our efforts to fit a tool, right? How much do we bend to serve the residents and how much do we bend to serve a tool that's free? That's where I'm coming from. So my understanding is that we could request the funding, but there's no way we would have that funding anytime in the near future. And I think the cheapest survey monkey, like the one month, thing because it it build annually is how most of them are so it'd be the cheapest one is like 275 bucks 
no, that's, um, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless I don't think there's a good answer to that. The there is a one hundred dollar one month option that we could ask for, but you're not. We're not. There's no way that we're going to have that in time in to time. do this. How you doing, Carlton? I, I'm doing fine, thanks. I, I thought this was a full uh, committee meeting, so. That, that starts at seven. Ah, I've got another one I need to join at seven. So Sorry about that. Well. I'm gonna stop down, good luck with it all. I appreciate your work very, very much. Thank you. Thanks, Carlton. Bye-bye. Um, so the, the $100 one, like that's the, other option, but that even that limits us. Well, I mean, a thousand responses. If we get a thousand responses, I'll stand on my roof and scream happiness, but that's just unrealistic. Yeah. Hmm. So my thought was, was like, we could do the drop down surveys with the options and then at the bottom provide an email address that if you have any specific uh, recommendations or things you want to consider please email them to the charter review committee at and provide the email. I mean, cause it, in my opinion, it's no different than typing it into the survey versus typing it into an email and sending it over. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like that's one way around that to get both options. Like, it, and I don't think we'll have a lot of people that spend time crafting an email and sending it. I would encourage everybody to do it, but I don't think that, that would be a lot of information to aggregate. I could be wrong. I could be way out in left field, but I don't, I doubt it. Hmm. What do you two think about that option? As a worst case scenario, it's probably, you know, something that's doable, but I, I'm, I'm kind of on the, the same idea as what Clooney was saying, like how, how much do we bend to, to really come up with a, a good options where, where people have a chance to voice their opinions and their desires. I mean, that right. And that it's, a, it's a money thing. Like if we could come up with a hundred bucks somewhere and convince the town to give it to us, yeah. it's, just, it's not something that is going to be done by August. And definitely not in two weeks when we wanted to launch the thing. Yeah. I mean, if that's if that's kind of where we're at, then it's either we pay for something or we use the the polling tool. Then I think we just press forward with the polling tool and do what we can, and maybe provide some other avenue for people to voice, you know, maybe like as an after action type comment post or right. whatever. Well, that's what I mean, right? Like put the email address at the bottom. Yeah. Bottom and top of the survey, please. Any specific comments you want the committee to consider, please email. And we could promote that and be like, if you email it, it's more likely to get actually read through than if it's put in the back of a survey, right? Which is not necessarily the best way to deal, but it's it's a doable solution. Yeah. Cleone, you look very disheartened with this process. <laughs> you know, it's we. I think that's the best solution we have, um, and I appreciate you being creative and thinking about that. It just, you know, you hear people, oh, people are so disengaged. They don't pay attention to local government. And I'm like, this is why. <laughs> this is why. I mean, the hoops that we um, have people jump through. And the survey is not even our biggest issue, right? I don't know if I shared this. I had to speak with three separate people to understand what the hell is a charter review. And so there's a p part of our work that requires us to educate the public so that they even care enough to f to fill out the survey, and I'll t I am going to have a, a a a mini temper tantrum as my children have displayed if we get less than a hundred people because it would have meant <laughs> that we could have used the survey monkey and have the full functionality, um, but is that a chance we want to take? Right, like. Well, you know, I is the question: Should we be asking? you know, are we going to get more than 100? Because we do lose the functionality of SurveyMonkey in hopes of ex capturing more responses. At the same time, if people are like me, they don't know what a charter review, and we 
based on our timeline for the survey, we don't have a lot of time to educate people as to why they should they should care. We have to convince a hundred people that they should care about this, as well as read the survey, read the charter enough to have an inform informed feedback. So that's that's my that's what's going through my head right now, right? Um, I wonder if that's a number. I don't we, know. I wonder if that's a number we can um, we can ask. How many people replied to the last polling, or how many people replied to the last survey that was queried for the town? Yeah, it was sub one hundred. But and what, that, what what was that survey? That survey was for the planning, right, or something? What was that? That's my understanding. For? Unless it was another one that was done subsequent. Yeah. To that, but. So maybe as a workaround, if we post it with SurveyMonkey where we get the first 100 and then we do something and if that link is done, we use all 100, we post another link and then we have another right. another 100. Like if somebody replies, oh, the link was broken, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, here's a new link. Or just edit the post and post in the new one. So the only my only issue with that is if someone goes to access it and the link is broken and they're like, well, screw this, I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna spend the time to craft an email to have them send me the correct link. Like, mm. Well, um, the only other option is do two surveys at once, post both links. And <laughs> do you think that would two, confuse 200 people? responses. What's that? You think that would be confusing to people? Oh, I, I do, but if yeah, we're only getting sub 100 people, I don't really think that it's going to be that big of an issue. But um, I think I would rather have the functionality there than worry about having more than 100 people. I, I in my honest opinion, I think we can get more if we're since we're posting it on social media and people are home now. And I think there are a lot of people mm -hmm. spending time on social media. If it's a two minute survey, I think you're gonna surpass the hundred faster than you think you would. Yeah. Respectfully to the, like, and I'm not trying to uh, put down the past survey. I think if you put it like, Cleone, I know on our street, I, there's at least 20 people that said they would do it alone. Mostly because I hounded them about it. I was like, this is coming. <laughs> But between like, you know, our networks, I know you're going to send it to Dice, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think, I think there is, I don't know if we'll get to 500. I do think we'll surpass 100 easily. All right. Okay. Is there another tool then? So I did spend some time looking for Survey Monkey options that were not Survey Monkey, like so similar mm -hmm. platforms, and they all kind of mm -hmm. run the same gamut. Like they limit functionality until you pay, which is fine. Like it, and the, some of them are like you can have a thousand responses, but you can ask three questions. You can have ten questions, but and there's the kind of mix of that around from best I could tell. So of the questions we chose, and I apologize that I didn't, I don't think I wrote them all down because I figured you captured them. Maybe I did. You did. I'm trying to see which are the open hand ended ones that we would lose using the town's tool. So it would be, um, what is your name? What is your address? What recommendations do you think there need to be to the charter? So, so it's just those. And so that would leave us with those questions that are very specific, right? We're, we're almost, um, when we think about how we can skew data, we are pointing them to the parts of the charter that we've already determined to be most important. And we're asking them to agree or disagree. Is that correct? More or less. The only thing I would say to round that is that we'd post the email with it and say, hey, if you have comments on something else, please send them in. But I don't think you I, I, I don't think you get a big response from that. You might. 
but that would give them it would put in their face the option that they can provide something additional I mean, I'm happy to go with Survey Monkey, and if we hit 100, we hit 100, and then it stops. I just, I don't think that's. I'm afraid of what individuals might not get access to it that would want it. Um, well, let's think about this, right? Um, if we had 100 versus 150, right? So if we have 100 where we can capture some more creative responses versus 150 that are only narrowed down to these specific questions, which one gives us most value? Because I guess I'm thinking now, how much of it is quantity versus quality? And is that the decision we should be looking at? What will best inform how we prioritize or review of the survey? Because that's what we're looking to do, right? We're, we're speaking to um, department heads, in the local government and to the community to say, what would you like us to look at? What is our priority? And do we need 150 folks answering three or four specific questions? Or do we need 100 folks responding and having that area to give us a little bit more general review with the understanding that although we'll have that email option, that let's say half of them won't utilize that. And then we have to aggravate get that. Does that make sense? Quantity versus quality of the responses. But so here's my my only thing with that is do you really think if someone is passionate enough to fill out the comment box for the town of Bridgewater's charter review committee survey, do you think given the easy access to an email, they would just send the email? Because really, other than the, the two open, other two open questions we lose are who are demographics, right? Who are you? And oh, and what boards or committees have you been on? Like, you're only losing one specific question related to the charter, which is, please provide any recommendations you additional information or recommendations you want the committee to consider. You know what I mean? So that's really, there's only one question that really impacts our work itself. Does that make because sense? Because we can aggregate, and, and we can aggregate the rest of the, the, the questions. I see what you're saying. All right. Um, I, I agree it's not the best. Like start having a hundred dollar a month survey monkey thing would be great. And I honestly, I ch chatted with my partner about it a little bit. Like, I don't want to spend the hundred dollars to be quite honest to do it, but I thought about it. Like it's a hundred bucks. We haven't asked for the money either. I just, I asked in a general term and I, my, the response was not, yeah, we'll get, we can write a hundred dollar check real quick kind of thing. So we, we could ask but it is the 29th of July and the goal was early August launch. Um, We're not going to get it out this week anyways, because Ed wants to have the whole committee vote on it. And I don't think our next meeting is for a while. I will look at the schedule because I had it up earlier. Maybe I will not. Do you have any experience using Google Forms? You have to have oh. Google, though. Like, what do you mean? I, from my understanding, you needed a Google account to fill in the box when I tried oh, to do it. I see. So we could still have the yes/no functionality, yeah. but they would the open comment box would require you to be signed in. So we'd be asking people to set up an account, and then I'm, my concern is a. Would people spend the time doing that? Do I think a lot of people have Google? Yes. Do I think a lot of people would need to sign up? No. But for the older population, they have a, there's a lot of AOL and Yahoo floating around. So I'm always like, oh, people still use that <laughs> because it's it, it is a Google world. But you are correct that there is um, a lot of folks, even Verizon, whatever comes with their cable, um, you'll find that. 
that may select certain demographics just relying on that Google account. Um, so, let's right. go so we have to make a decision tonight. <laughs> we don't really, we don't have to, because we're not going to launch it anyways, because Ed wants to have the whole committee vote on all the questions. And since he's not there, he tonight for the actual meeting, we can't vote on it anyway. So I was just going to present the questions that we have as we have them right now to the group at on the agenda. So no, we don't have to make a decision on it tonight. We would have to schedule a subsequent meeting. And then my only issue is our next charter review committee meeting. I'm just looking at the date. Uh, the 19th, is that what it is? Yeah, August 19th, which is too late. Because our goal was to have it up for at least two weeks, right, in August. So we have to launch it by the 15th of August. So yeah. it's not going to happen anyway, since unless we move it, the whole charter committee. Yeah, I think I, I would need some time to think about that, right? Because I, it really does go against my principle around, and I hear you, what you said about the email component. But if the other questions are almost preconceived, right, it's really limiting um, people's choices, especially those that are main, are relying on the survey to inform them, then we're less likely to um, capture some information, um, some more general information. So I, I need to think that through a little bit. Well, so my um, next question, my only thought on that, Cloney, yeah. the more open-ended questions you have, the more time you need someone to be able to allocate to aggregating that. So like every open-ended question you have, somebody has to manually go through and put all that data together and analyze it, right? I wouldn't want to go too heavy on the open-ended. I don't think, I don't, I personally don't have enough time to have 10 open-ended questions with 150 responses. Like that's, I don't know if that's doable. Well, we didn't propose 10, right? I think at the most we have is one or two. No, I think we actually at one point, oh. um, one, I think it's four because are you with the involvement in government the what article because that couldn't be so that's an open-ended one but that's just a space limitation thing but I guess my issue my, my concern is what's the difference between one open-ended question versus one email and like I hear what you're saying so like maybe thinking about it is fine I don't think we're gonna get a lot of responses in the open-ended question anyway to be honest so Yeah. Uh, do you disagree? Do you think we're going to get a lot of people that fill that comment box in if we can find a way to do it? If we if we do do that education piece, I think we 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 may. Um, it is a very dense document. It's a lot of um, pages to go through. Um, so I am definitely concerned about the education piece that will inform people enough to provide. Um, that feedback that I think is important. So when I think about that, I'm like, okay, how much will people be educated enough to provide an open-ended question? But to eliminate it as an option makes me concerned at the same time. So that's the part where... Um, how are you educating them? Yeah. I don't know. I've not done this before, but we, ha we have to think of a way, whether it be a slideshow that um, highlights the parts of the, and I'm going to just kind of freestyle it now. You can do like, um, if we're doing it on social media, I have a link to a PowerPoint that folks can come, come to where you get the subtitles of each section so that, and then the description of the, the, the subsection so that they know that they can go to this part of the charter where they're interested, but there has to be something that is available um and that's the one that first thing to think about i could me no not necessarily i had talked to ed about educating the the community because we and he mentioned that um he would be in favor of that and um, possibly putting a powerpoint 
but I'm learning just like everybody else, right? It is a pretty dense document. And so I would have to have some time to kind of look through that and think it through. Okay. I mean, so I guess, so we have five minutes to the other meeting. There's no way this survey is getting done in August. So we're blowing that timeline out of the water. This is going to be a September thing at the earliest now, right? The chart and now the education piece is, I think, going to push it back a little bit more. I thought we were just going to put a link to the charter at the top of the survey and say, please review the charter before you please take an opportunity to look at the charter before you answer the survey, which people aren't going to and do, but it's right. there. For that, them. And that's the thing, too, when you do that, right, it, it, it puts up the appearance of being transparent and inclusive but when you do that it, that isn't truly in inclusive or making it accessible to the general public because it's a pretty dense document so um i think that you know after the our, our next meeting we'll have a little bit more visibility to the timeline and see what we can accommodate i mean that's fine i just yeah, I, I know Ed would, the, Ed, the goal was to have the results for Ed in September to the town council. So that's just not going to happen now, that, which is fine. Like it is what it is. We're not the first government project to be late on something. Steve, you look like you're mulling something over. <laughs> I am. Um, I just, I, I kind of was under the same impression that this would be like, it would be a survey deal first. And, you know, we'd put the link to the, the charter and, I mean, the idea is that we get people that are somewhat educated on it already that would give us their opinions on the charter. I mean, we have 30,000 people here that are in Bridgewater. Not everybody's going to take the time to read a PowerPoint or even the survey for that matter, but they're going to voice their own opinions on what they do know and what they do believe need to be changed. So even if we, I mean, we're worried about people taking the time just to click a couple of buttons and write a couple of sentences. I don't think that they're going to take the time to one, open up the charter or even two, view a PowerPoint. And not, and it's a view, the education piece, we have to get that approved as a government document if it's educational. So that has to go through town council to get approved and be like, yep, this is, this is what this says. This requires like that. It's a heavy lift to yeah. add to, assume the responsibility of educating people. I, I totally agree with you, Cleone. People need to know what's in the document, but it's not our responsibility to walk the handhold them through it. I don't think, I think that's asking a lot. Yeah. And I think that for our purposes, our subcommittee, I think our purpose was just to make the survey. It's not to focus on uh, an educational format. I think that, well, I, I agree with you. I think it's important. And I think that that doesn't, need to be addressed at some point so that the the members of, of our community have the ability to understand a document that's really full of just a bunch of legal garbage. And uh, I, so I, I agree with you on that regard, but I think that we all in some form or fashion understand the charter to some extent, whether it's only the areas that affect us personally or on a greater scale. but if we just give the survey out there to these individuals and I'll let them kind of run wild with the open-ended questions, I think that that's good enough. Uh, and then with the pinpointed things that we kind of already know, let's just get their, it's, let's just get their easy yes, no, this or that type response. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. Um, it's just like one minute until the, uh, the actual meeting. Just wanted to give you a heads up. I can't have two meetings for going at once. Yeah, we're gonna is this the same link or do we have to log off and log back in different. for different i'm sorry tom thomas what did you say you have to go out and then come back in okay all right see you over there I'm over there in 30 right seconds <laughs> all right sorry folks right. to put our wrench into the plan it's all good all right see you soon <laughs>